Hello, my name is Nick Huntington Klein. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve the Nash equilibrium in a sequential game where you have turns. So somebody takes a turn, then somebody else sees what they've done, takes their own turn, then you see what that person's done, you take your own turn. So like chess, chess is an example of a sequential game. I take a move, you see what I've done, you make your move, I see what you've done, I make move, my move, and so on and so forth. So that, that's an example of a sequential game. Uh, this is as opposed to simultaneous games where both players play at the exact same time, like rock, paper, scissors, where both players uh, do the same thing at the same time. Okay, so that would be a, a simultaneous game. We're talking about sequential games. With, su with simultaneous games, we talk about how to get the Nash equilibrium using the concept of best responses. Uh, whatever it is that you do, what would my best response to be to that? The sequential games work in the exact same way, where we're always thinking about what is my best response to what you're doing. The thing with the sequential game is that you can see what the other person has actually done, so you can play the best response uh, based on that. So what you're really trying to do is anticipate how the other person will respond to you. You're always thinking, what is their best response going to be if I do what I'm going to do, right? So that's that's your goal. And so uh, we can figure out how to figure how to find the Nash equilibrium of a sequential game in that way. So let's take this game as an example. This is just a very generic game, uh, and what this is doing, this is set up in such a way uh, that uh, we can, we, we are, we're following this tree as the story of the game. So each node in the tree, each place where the tree sort of splits into two branches, it uh, could be more than two, but here it's always two, uh, has a player's name on it. So that is the person who is making the decision at that point on the tree. So the player A play, makes the first choice here. The choices that they have are they can go up or they can go down. All right, cool. So then after player A moves, it's player B's. So player B now has the, the, the role for the next set of nodes. Uh, if player A goes up, B can go left or right. If player B goes down, player B can go left or right. These could be different choices made uh, based on up or down. So player B could say, okay, if you go up, I'm going to go left. But if you go down, I'm going to go right. That's perfectly valid. Uh, in fact, we could even name these different things. Maybe this is left and right. This one is backwards and forwards. Who knows? Uh, here we actually have a third decision. So after pl if player A goes down and then player B goes right, then player A has another decision to make. They can either go north or south. Uh, now if we follow the tree along all these decisions, we get to the end and the end has the payout on it. So if, for example, player A goes up and player B goes left, then player A gets two points, player B gets four points. And they're always interested in maximizing the number of points that they have. So we have this tree. How can we find the Nash equilibrium on it? How can we think about best responses to do that. So the key is, uh, I want to make a decision. I want to make a decision, let's say that I'm player B, and I want to figure out, okay, if player A goes down, do I want to go left or right? But at this point, I don't know what the consequences of that decision is going to be. But I can figure out the consequences by thinking about what player A's best response is going to be. I can say, okay, I know if I'm player B and I go left right here, I'm going to get two and a half points. If I go right, I don't know what's going to happen. But I can guess what's going to happen based on what player A's best response would be to that. So in order to solve these trees out, we need to start from the end and work our way backwards. By starting from the last decisions that get made in the game, we can figure out what the consequences of our actions are going to be at earlier points in the game. It, it allows us to project forwards and predict what's going to happen if we act a certain way. Uh, and in so doing, figure out what we want to do, right? So the way we can solve out these game trees is by starting at the end. Uh, we choose, start at the last node in the game that we know all the payouts for, figure out who's choosing at that node. Uh, then, once we know who's choosing, figure out what they're going to choose, which is going to be based on the payouts that they see at that node. Uh, then we'll circle the option that they would choose. Then we can sort of imagine the payout for that option gets sort of moved back up to their node. And then at the previous node that leads to that one, we now know what the consequences of our decisions are going to be, and we can figure out future decisions. And we can follow this, this set of steps again and again until we make our way back up to the top. So let's walk through this example here. So the last decision in this game is player A. So if player A played down and player B played right, then player A gets this decision of whether to go north or south. If player A goes north, they get five points. If they go south, they get two points. Five is better than two. So we will go ahead and circle north. Uh, if we get to this point, then we know that uh, uh, we are that player A is going to choose north. And this is important information for player B, uh, because player B wants to know, hey, if I, if I play right so as to let you make this decision, what are you going to do? Are you going to give me these three points down here, or are you going to give me these two points up here? 
I know that you're going to give me these three points down here. And no matter what player A says, player B is not going to trust them, right? Player A could say, hey, please give me this right. Send me right, please. And I promise that I'll give you three points rather than two. But if player B listened to them and said, okay, fine, I believe you, I'll send you to this right because I want these three points rather than the 2.5, player A at that point has no reason to stick to their word. They've just made a non-credible promise. Uh, and so as soon as it became time for them to actually make this decision, they think, well, I did say my, I did say that, but also five points is better than two. I'm going to ditch my word, right? Uh, uh, and then the, game, then, then the game ends at this point. Uh, there's no chance for B to retaliate in any way. Uh, and so A has no reason to stick to their word. There's no consequence for doing so. So if we get to this point, player A is going to play north, uh, which means that now we know what's the payout for player B of going down here. Well, if player B goes to, to the right down here, then play, we know that player A is going to go north and we're going to end up at this payout. So now that's sort of the payout for this node. Okay, so now we can back up by one. Uh, so uh, let's imagine, now we know the payout for this node as well. If player B goes to the left, uh, they're going to get 2.5. Player B is choosing at this node, by the way, so we only care about player B's outcomes. If player B goes left, they're going to get 2.5. If they go right, they know that player A is going to go north, and they're going to get 2. 2.5 is better than 2, uh, and so player B is going to go to the left. Okay. Uh, we can't go quite all the way back up to the top here because we don't currently know the consequence of going up for player A, up at the top. Uh, so let's figure that out. If player A goes up, we end up at this node. This is also a player B node. Player B is deciding what to do. If player B goes left, they can get four. If player B goes right, they get three. Four is better than three. And so if we get to this point, player B is going to go to the left. Which means that if pl net player A now knows if they go up, this is the payout they're going to get. If they go down, player B is going to go left, and this is the payout they're going to get. So we can predict both of those things. Uh, so now player A knows, okay, if I go up, then I'm going to get uh, that 2 right there. If I go down, then I'm going to get the 6. 6 is better than 2. And so player A is going to go down in that first round. And so that gives us the Nash equilibrium. Player A is going to want to go down which player B is going to respond by going left, which is going to give 6 to A and 2.5 to B. Now notice, both of them would be happier if player A had gone up and player B had gone right, because then they'd be 100 for A, which is better than 6, and 3 for B, which is better than 2.5. But even though they'd rather both be here than down here, there's no way that they can get here. It's not a Nash equilibrium. Because if player B is like, you know, hey, look, we'd both be better off if we were up here rather than down here. So why don't we just do it? Just give me an up, play up first, and then I'll play right. And then we'll both be better off. And player A says, well, that would be better off. Sure, great. But if I go up, it's immediately in player B's interest to break their word, go left instead, because four is better than three, and player A ends up with only two rather than six. So this is a non-credible promise on B's part, and we can't get to that really nice outcome, even though it's where we'd like to be. All right, that's how we can find the Nash equilibrium on a sequential game by using backwards induction, starting at the end of the game, using what we do know, the, the choices for which we know the consequences, figuring out what we want to do there, and then using that answer, using that best response to then figure out, okay, what are the consequences of decisions earlier on the tree? And now we can make those decisions and then keep following that back until we know what's going to happen in the very start. And then we can just follow the choices until we get to our payout. We know that player A is going to go down, player B is going to go left, and that's going to give us that payout right there. All right, that is it. Thank you.